before Mike Will made it produce the songs like Black Beatles, Mercy, No Lie, and even Miley Cyrus's We Can't Stop. Before becoming an industry icon, starting his own production company, Ear Drummers Entertainment, and accumulating an estimated net worth of $5 million. <laughs> you getting them checks though, I can't be mad at you. Man, it's past the checks at this point, man. I'm just trying to stay consistent. Hey, hey, you doing it though. For real, no, for real. Before collaborating with the likes of Beyonce, Gucci Mane, Nicki Minaj, Rick Ross, 2 Chainz, GZ, Future, and Ray Schremer. Somebody like Sway Lee and somebody like Jimmy has like such an interesting and like distinctive voice. You like the more open the beat is, you know what I'm saying, the more they're gonna stand out. You know what I'm saying? And Before it was nominated for three Grammys in 2017 and won an iHeartRadio Award and two BET Hip Hop Awards. Long before he became one of the hottest producers in the world, Mike Will made it developed his music skills on a broken hand-me-down keyboard. He grew up in a musical family but had dreams of becoming an athlete. Eventually music became a serious passion for him, and he developed a plan to create a career in the industry while he went to college to keep his folks happy. But eventually he would have to drop out to make sure he could pursue his dreams. What's going on guys, my name is Michael McCredden, talking about how Mike Will made it, here for you on Before They Are Famous. I've documented other producers in the past like Dr. Dre, Metro Boomin, and DJ Khaled. But you guys let me know who's next in the comments down below. And what was that moment that you said, you know, like, this is what I think that I want to do? Um, when I started making money. Mike Will made it was born Michael Len Williams II on March 23rd, 1989 in Marietta, Georgia. His father, Michael Williams Sr., was an executive at IBM, but also worked as a DJ in clubs during the 1970s. His mom, Shirley Williams, was a bank loan officer, but once sang in a gospel group, and used to take Mike with her when she was out of town for concerts. Mike was the youngest of three children with two older sisters. One was the drum major in the Olympics, and the other was a great athlete who got her picture on the front page of a sports section for her softball skills. With both his sisters doing so well, well Mike, he just wanted to keep up. As a kid, Mike saw himself as an athlete. He played basketball, baseball, and football, and had dreams of one day playing in the NBA. As he put it, I was just a fly young cat with hoop dreams, then my hoop dreams turned into music dreams, and I made those dreams come true. Music was just a hobby for Mike at first. He started playing music on a broken Casio keyboard, which was a hand-me-down from his older sister. The batteries used to fall out the back, and he had to tape them into place. He used to hear songs on the radio and figure out how to play them himself on his keyboard. The first song he taught himself to play was Still Fly by the Big Timers. He would play the song and his childhood friend, Fortune, would freestyle over it. Soon he'd be adding more songs to his repertoire and tapping pencils and hands to create beats for his friends to freestyle to in the lunchroom. Mike had cited Dr. Dre, Timberland, Pharrell, and Shoddy Red as his musical influences. But growing up, his favorite rapper was T.I., and so DJ Toop, he was a huge inspiration for him. I never heard of him. T.I. was always my favorite rapper, like, growing up or whatnot, you know what I'm saying? And then, like, Toon was just making all the beats for T.I. and like, you know what I'm saying, he was bringing like that cowbell out. He's actually had a lot of people who have inspired or influenced him. Do you have any mentors within the industry? Oh uh, yeah, I, I would say Puff, I would say Juicy J, and then Jimmy Iovine, of course, my manager, DJ. I got other people, you know what I'm saying, outside the industry and stuff that, that you know what I'm saying, keep me grounded and, you know what I'm saying, keep me focused and stuff too, so. When he was 14 years old, Mike's dad bought him a $500 Korg ES1 beat machine for Christmas from a local music store, Mars Music. Eventually, he would master more and more equipment, and by the time he was 16, he was spending time at a professional recording studio in Atlanta trying to sell his beats to established artists. He formed his production company, Ear Drummers Entertainment, in 2007. Six. It wasn't much at the time, but over time, his company would add both producers and artists to its roster. The company now boasts eight in-house producers, and in 2014, he signed 2-9 and Ray Schremer. But back in 2006, Mike was ignored by mainstream artists, at least at first. But one day, he got a CD of his beats into the hands of Gucci Mane at Patchwork Recording Studios. Gucci liked what he heard and invited Mike to recording studio. He rapped over his beats almost all night, then offered Mike $1,000 for one of them. What'd he do? With the money, he wisely invested in some more equipment. That and a couple pairs of Jordans, of course. Mike was still a teenager when he began producing for Gucci Mane, helping to develop the future of trap music. He worked on mixtapes like Wapaholics, The Movie, So Icy Boy, and Will Chamberlain. Mike got his first official credit as a producer on Gucci's No Pad, No Pencil for the song East Atlanta 6. Graduating high school, Mike had every reason to go directly into the music industry, but both of his sisters graduated.
graduated college, so it was expected of him to do the same. His father put a lot of pressure on him to go, so he attended Chattahoochee Technical College before transferring to Georgia Institute of Technology in Atlanta. He got decent grades, but after a couple of years, decided to try and convince his dad to let him drop out. He told his dad he had sold beats for about $1,000 a pop, so his dad thought it over and said, you take a break and we'll revisit it in six months. By this time, Mike had already began working with OJ to Juice Man, Shoddy Low, Waka Flocka Flame, Soldier Boy, and 2 Chains. But around this time, of course, 2 Chains was known as Titty Boy, you know. It's a language. There's nothing stupid or fruity going on. Not long after dropping out of college, Mike was able to add some big names to that list, like Future, Jeezy, and Ludacris. But his most important collaboration at that time was with Meek Mill and Rick Ross on the song Tupac Back. On peaked at number 22 on the Billboard US rap charts, it was also the debut single for Meek Mill and the lead single for Rick Ross's Maybach Music Group compilation album, Self Made Volume 1. A few months later, Mike dropped his debut mixtape, established in 1989, Last of the Dying Breed. On December 28, 2011, four more mixtapes would follow over the next three years, and he continued to produce for rising stars in the hip hop world. In 2012, he struck gold twice, hitting number one on the US R&B and US rap charts, with both 2 Chains, No Lie featuring Drake, and Mercy with Kanye West, Big Sean, Pusha T, and Titty Boy. It was now known as 2 Chains, of course. Continuing to work with the biggest southern rappers in the biz, Mike comfortably expanded his repertoire working with pop artists like Beyonce, Rihanna, and Miley Cyrus. In fact, Mike's biggest hit to date back in 2013 was the Miley Cyrus song, We Can't Stop. But she kind of has since, which is great. He stayed open minded and flexible with producing, and in an interview with Complex, advised young producers to do the same, stating, Stay focused and don't limit yourself. Don't listen to anyone telling you what you can and can't do, just be original. You can look up to other producers, but be versatile and don't put yourself in a box. Despite charting Billboard every year since 2011 and working with some of the biggest artists in the world, his first number one single on the Billboard Hot 100 would not come until 2016. The song that did that? Ray Schremer's Black Beatles, featuring Mike's longtime collaborator, Gucci Mane. The rest of the story, well, you know the story because this is Before Their Fibs. My name's Michael McCrud. We got two more videos right here. Give one a click. Also, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Boom!